I'm scared. You should be. It'll be fun. Uh, no, nothing bad will happen, <laughs> I'm sure. But we already killed a lot of fear. <laughs> well, welcome everyone to this special Tuesday session. How's the Tuesday feel for y'all? Weird. It is weird. This is so bizarre. It Thankfully, is. we're just doing it once. It's thrown my entire week out of balance. It's Thank y'all for accommodating. <laughs> Existential stress. <laughs> All right. So we return to the spiral of filth, where we find our heroes recovering from a drawn out battle with the Lord of Fear. While they may be down a cheat in hand, uh, the Lord is down an entire body on account of he exploded. So that's an even trade or thereabouts. Still reeling from your recent disarmament, Chance, you find that Nicodemus's treatment has left you with a fully healed stump, the likes of which even the finest of doctors would be in awe of. But it's a bit peculiar that your spots have grown back in sort of a honeycomb pattern. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Now, uh, who ended up with his arm? <laughs> that would be me. All right. Uh, give <laughs> me <laughs> a healing smarts check. The actual healing skill. All right, that's a four. That's a success. You notice that this arm in your possession is starting to rapidly deteriorate far faster than flesh should be necrotizing. You reckon it's probably the influence of being so far into the domain of filth here. In this spiral of filth where decay is at its strongest. But Nicodemus, even with the great power that the natural world has seen fit to bestow upon you. You don't think you can fix this. You don't think you can put this arm back where it's supposed to be. Not by yourself. Not alone. But you have paid attention to what Chance has been bargaining with lately. Who he has been bargaining with. And you can't help but wonder if that strange power that he borrowed might be able to help. Chance, we got to do something. You're going to lose the arm. You know, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It's not even my shooting hand. <laughs> I don't care. I won't see you lose it. You really want to be messing with magic you don't understand in the middle of this pit? I understand the situation pretty fine, I think. I don't... I don't know what to expect ahead of us. And I don't know what it's going to cost us to do this. Just let me try, okay? Can you can you call the witch? Yeah. Yeah, I'll call the witch. How would you like to do this, Ka? Ring, ring. As you mention that you are seeking to call upon Madame Madoska, you can hear her tickle at the back of your mind. All at once, you see time stop before you again, as it did when you were back in her lair. The various pieces of the Lord of Fear that are still plummeting to the ground from his recent explosion have frozen hanging midair, leaving you at the mercy of this incredibly powerful woman who saunters like a shadow 
through these fleshy walls towards you. Look who has come calling again. I really appreciate you answering. You can see uh, not all of me is calling again. <laughs> oh, he took almost as much of you as I did. Yeah, suppose he did. Wait, what did I you take? <laughs> Don't worry about it. You'll find out later. But I am assuming you are wanting to fix this scenario. And I hear this friend of yours would like to help. He's he's really talented, but I don't I don't know about reattaching an arm. I don't know. This is beyond him. Yeah, but it's not beyond Mitoska. She wanders over towards him and then bonks the frozen in time wolf on the head with her little staff. <laughs> and suddenly Nicodemus is now privy to this realm of stopped time to partake in this conversation with Chance and Madoska. Don't don't panic, Rico. What? What? <laughs> what? This one is a bit more jumpy than your first time. Oh, he doesn't have the, the benefit of your hospitality. We're not in a very pleasant place right now. You know what? You are right. This is absolute pigsty. I hate it here. At least there's some bits of that Lord of Fear to brighten up the place. Disgusting. Now then, Nicodemus, was it? She turns and looks up at the wolf that is nearly three times her diminutive stature. Me. I am here. You are seeking a favor from Madame Madoska. Is this right? Nico remembers the wisdom that Beck gave. How about a trade? Oh, what do you think you have that Madoska would want? Some magic beans. Did that's you say magic good, beans? That's a good fucking answer. <laughs> <laughs> I was do not expecting how, that. Do you know how long it has been since Madoska has partaken in actual genuine magic beans? Oh. Oh. Probably too long, huh? I did not expect this. You oh, may have real. to sweeten. <laughs> you may have to sweeten this pot of beans. I may want something to dine on in addition. And hmm. you can see her rubbing at her chin as she surveys you. I would not ask much. Not as much as Chance here owes me. Just one favor. What are the details? To be redeemed at a later date. No. <laughs> you are a candy one, you are. Mm. It is not wise to take a witch's off her carte blanche like that. She then looks up to Chance and smiles. <laughs> uh, Nico here, he'd probably do you a favor just out of the goodness of his soul. As long as oh, it doesn't cost his so? soul. Mm. Oh, but that's the tasty part. Let us see them. How about I make the terms a little bit more concrete? One favor that will not endanger your body, mind, or soul to be paid within a year's time. Hmm. Could you write out the specific favor in text? I don't have one in mind yet. I'm, I'm having you in my back pocket for something that may come up later. Hmm. Nico thinks a little bit and he rubs his chin. It is very possible I will have no need of you. And then you will be getting my services for free. I don't know, though. I'm still giving you these really, really powerful beans. <laughs> you can see her salivating at the thought of these magic beans. <laughs> these are the strongest magical things I've ever run into. 
Give me a persuasion check for Nicodemus. <laughs> uh, and also, he believes this. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. the old bean bluff. Oh, seven's pretty good. Let me roll <laughs> her spirit. Ooh, but it doesn't beat Nate. Can I Benny? Oh, you can Benny. You sure can. Let's try. Watch me get a critical fail. <laughs> yeah, can it can it get much better? I don't know. Oh. Ah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna do one more. Just All one right. more. Just one more. One more again. It, you might want to spend your conviction on this, come to think of it. <laughs> Shut up, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your resources. Oh, she gosh. They just keep getting worse. Uh, all right. We're stopping there. We're stopping there. All right. Uh -oh. <laughs> so we failed to persuade, but it, she knows it's not a lie. Indeed, she she believes that you believe in the beans. Mm. I'm sorry if I do not have a favor in my back pocket. I will not be able to do you work this day. How about this? No harm to any person or living thing. And I'll do you the favor. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, this is acceptable. She uh, plants her staff in the ground, and by ground I mean the foot-deep tar surrounding you, and then extends her other hand out to shake on the deal. She then withdraws her hand and is like, oh yes, one moment, and then spits in it, and then puts it back up for you to shake. I just quirk my eyebrow and uh, spit in my hand as well. Uh, the deal is sealed with an indirect kiss. <laughs> ah, um, marvelous. Moist. I shake her hand. Uh, very moist. You think her hands were probably already moist. Well, moister. Indeed. Uh, after this moist making session, she uh, wobbles her way on over to Chance and uh, examines the wound. Hmm. Better healing than I thought. Now oh, then, she looks at uh, the arm and motions for you to give it to her. It's awesome. She takes the arm and then tosses it up in the air where it dissolves into nothing. Old arm, don't need it. New arm going to be better. And she puts the crook of her staff against Chance's stump and then begins to extend it outward. It looks as if it is caught on something, something you cannot see. And oh, that Chance, is deeply unsettling. Momentarily, you feel a blinding pain as nerves regrow. No. But soon, you can feel your arm is back. However, you can't see it. All right. Ooh. Arm back, arm better. Very good for cheating now. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 Chance, you now have an invisible arm. Oh, amazing. So it's we keep the rad. sprite. <laughs> yeah, we can keep the sprite and you lose the hindrance. You no longer have the one arm hindrance. Huh. I can't get over that one arm chance is still simpering. <laughs> is that expression? <laughs> I love that expression. Ari, you did a great job. It's good. It's real good. It's fucking sick. Now that time has returned to its normal flow, the parts of the Lord of Fear that were scattered continue to fall. Uh, Lynn, give me a notice. Something I am very, very great at. Indeed. 
well renowned for your D4 notice. Okay. Oh, okay. there's the explosion though. Oh no. Not only do you see one, you see dozens of those strange spirits that you saw in your youth swarming through the sky, picking up and devouring the pieces of the Lord of Fear that have been scattered to the winds. There's just tons of these little fuckers flying around. I think I kind of just broadly gesture towards the air. Uh, I don't think we're safe to hang around here. We can figure out that arm situation later. Let's kind of look over to Nico Divas. You got the arm, right? He thinks about this for a second if he wants to answer. It's like, and I said, it's handled. Don't worry about it. No, it's an arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's both the arm and the hand. <laughs> I walk over to him uh, and grab him by the scruff. Let's get you healed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look so good and I squeeze him a little tighter oh. Ow. those scar fresh wounds raked across your back they sure do smarts hey, you gotta you gotta cure him up before he rapid fire decays in this room <laughs> hey, do I need to roll um I won't make you roll since we're out of combat and you can just okay, keep okay. doing it till you succeed got it so we'll get rid of that wound on Lynn. <laughs> you strike. Subtract the power points. Oh, you already did that. <laughs> so How <mad>. many strikes <laughs> does Lynn have now? A lot. He's covered head to toe. All right. I think at this <laughs> point, Beck is is standing up out of the muck and just like like whipping his hands down to get all the tar off him and he's wiping it off his face and Erebus had licked some off of his face so he's just he's kind of covered in gore right now he's trying to shrug it off it's god god damn it I go landed on my tail that hurts you know ah uh, yeah cause and effect <laughs> now, uh, I had a character I had written that we were looking for a marble. Oh yeah, but you I'm not. Give me sh- a, a notice I don't, to look around. I don't know if Lynn would have known to like pay attention to that. I think I, I feel like Con- Conrad would would be examining the corpse, so right. I could always give a roll. Yeah, give me a notice for Conrad. He's good at that. He well, technically, it, in fact. Beck is still holding his top half, or the top half of his body is uh, like, you uh, know, next to Beck. Roll. Yeah, and then the the bottom half is wherever uh, I'll bet it once it exploded to. I'm surprised the fur trapper has bad notice. That wasn't bad. Look, <laughs> you don't need notice if you just build traps. You you can hear it. <laughs> All right, Uh, Conrad, it takes you a moment to find what you're looking for because you're sifting through the tar and debris until you notice that what you're looking for is in Beck's grasp. He's still holding on to the top half of this guy. Yeah. And something drops from him, nearly falling into the muck before you rescue it. As the rest of him dissolves into that same black tar, all that is left behind is one of his medals. One of those metals that was pinned to his decaying flesh. Give me a science roll for Conrad. Ooh. All right, that's a success. Conrad, you realize this is made of tin. That's a strange thing for metals to be made out of. It's malleable and not particularly long lasting. How's it taste, though? (laughs) You want to taste it? (laughs) <laughs> swallow it, swallow it, swallow it. Uh, it. It would be a pretty tough pill to swallow, given this man was far larger than any of y'all, and his medals were scaled up to fit his fantastically large frame. Size queen it, size queen it. So he is channeling a uh, dungeon meshy. Bread, 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 bread. 
<laughs> and as you look over this metal, you notice Gurgle looking up at you with big, pleading eyes. <gasps> no! <laughs> Num nums? No. I'm just back. gonna. I, I'm just gonna ask him. What happens if you eat it? Uh, he just pats his belly full. <laughs> Dude. But but that ain't toes. Hmm. That's certainly not toes. He he also seems puzzled by this. This is not toes, and yet he wants to eat it. Back this is a strange conundrum. I want to play this very straight. Just can <laughs> I can I see if I just roll a notice check to see if I see or do not see? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Gurgle, Lord of Fear. <laughs> <laughs> you notice what what's happening here? Uh, it looks like Conrad might be considering it. But <laughs> <laughs> we might see Petticoat's Ultimax form. Well, it's true. Eyes go completely wide. But thankfully, no. Nicodemus, you know that this won't doom him to become the next Lord of Fear. He could be just the Lord of Toes for all we know. Is that better? <laughs> Beck looking to Conrad says we did make an agreement with them you'd be granting them their freedom you understand the weight of that don't you I think I'm just gonna I'd sort of nod towards Beck And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask uh, Gurgle, what is it that you want? Toes? <laughs> Please. Uh, I'm just Back. gonna give it. I I, th I feel like <laughs> how is this gonna play out? If does is does someone <laughs> not want me to give it to him? Well, Dad, I'm just curious at this point. <laughs> When, when he says toes, please, Beck has dealt with these things before, these, specifically these goblins. Um, he uh, also Erebus is out right now. Is mm -hmm. Erebus responding to this thing or is Erebus just not interested at all whatsoever? Erebus is watching intently. Yeah. I. I trust mm. Gurgle with my life, so. <laughs> Whoa. I think I think Beck looks no. at Gurgle and says, "No, mm. not toes. Mm? Drop the act. You're smarter, more capable than you've been acting this whole time. What do you want? Do you want?" Oh my freedom for your people he thinks long and hard about this blushing a little from you calling him smart and <laughs> <laughs> it takes all of the confidence he can muster to deliver the most eloquent thing you've ever heard him say toes for all <laughs> communist. <Socialism>. communist. <laughs> I think Beck sighs at this and then draws like a line with his eyes to Erebus and says I just... Try not to be slaves to your hunger. Wait, 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 wait. Can you just ask him one question with that whip? <laughs> Just I one think question. You and the whip. Beck looks at Nicodemus like he's a crazy person. <laughs> and then just from behind reaches behind him and just whoop, whoop, cracks the whip of truth. What do you want to ask? Gurgle is terrified. Ask Gurgle if his name is Gurgle. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're doing and light then, detector baseline. And then uh, Beck cracks the whip again. Is your name Gurgle of the domain of fear? 
he immediately, instinctually responds back, New name Gurgle, named by Conrad. And you can give me a notice if you want to try and suss out anything strange about that. And you get a free reroll since you're using the whip. Mm-hmm. I think Lynn is just like nudging. Wait, wasn't this supposed to explode? No, uh, it wasn't what supposed to explode. I got a four on That's my notice. You got a four on the D6. You got a oh. one on the D4. Gotcha. Let's reroll. Dice have shapes. There we there's go. A, there's a four on the D4 and a four. Oh, uh, hell yeah. All right. So you got an eight on your uh, re- free reroll. And even on that eight, you think he's telling the truth. That is what he believes. Well, he didn't say a lie. Conrad and, did name him Gurgle. Mm-hmm. Are, are you just doing like a baseline? For... <laughs> if the whip works or not? I'm just wondering if this... What if he's the... This might be a trickster. What if, he was the... what if he was the third? Third what? Gestures Lord? at the Lord's ask I say give him the damn thing I don't feel safe here need to reiterate <laughs> he's bouncing on his foot fingers a little excitedly no, I think we would I forgot. know <laughs> I think we would know if he was a lord of this place there's lords to different aspects of domains and he's been traveling with us this entire time I think I think reveal. Beck <laughs> Beck just shakes his head, says, "Your choice, Conrad. Are you gonna give up your pet or not?" I just give the thing to Gurgle straight away. <laughs> he happily gobbles up that metal no. with his small body and the metal's large size. It's like putting a coin in a slot too small. You can see it bulge out his throat of it as it travels down. I'm listening. And you have that large gulp sound, Shut almost up. comedic. <laughs> he has the most satisfied sigh of his life, petting his little tummy. What the fuck is it's... happening, Lynn? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just enjoying the show at this point. Oh. Okay. Beck points his gun at Gurgle and says, We had a deal to the end of the line. Your work ain't done yet. Uh huh. Keep up. He uh, keeps on traveling with y'all to the end of the line, to the very end of the spiral of filth. What is Erebus doing? You feel Erebus rile a bit as he watches the creature eat this medallion. You're not sure if this is something he is simply reacting to out of distaste, because this is a very distasteful creature, or if he has some specific desire in mind. He's impenetrable to you at the moment. His mood is opaque. I think Beck probably thinks that Erebus looks down on this creature. Erebus is a superior being. He's not just a denizen of this dream like everything else. He comes from someplace deeper. So I don't think Beck would be that shocked by this. Um... I guess he's just going to keep walking with Erebus following him if Erebus follows. And indeed he does. Your shadow walks with you on and on. Eventually, and it's not too long after this, at the heart of this seventh layer of the spiral, you reach a massive cathedral-like opening in the very center of the spiral. The tremendous archway looks as if it is built for figures much larger than yourself. 
and it leads inward into darkness beyond. Any final preparations before you cross this threshold? I was going to say, uh, before I do that, can I ruin your scene by, if, if Beck is leading the way, having a moment to chat with Conrad? Ooh. While this is happening, can Nicodemus, uh, can Beck just circle with Nicodemus and be like, Listen, I, this is embarrassing, but <laughs> I landed on my tail pretty hard back there. <laughs> and it's, I just, you mind helping me out? You look back and he's got like cartoon, like jagged kinks in yeah. his tail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm getting broke his old. Ass. <laughs> my my tail ain't the way it used to be. You youngins, you're going to hit 35. You're going to wake up in the morning. Your tail's just going to hurt. All right? So give me a hand here. When your spine problems are external. <laughs> I, I just I just look at the <laughs> nasty cracked tail. Oh, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just like... <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to put my hand on it. Do you mind? <laughs> Listen, it ain't nothing none of us haven't seen before. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, sure I've never ass. seen this before. <laughs> never. It's, it's a perfectly average tale. I think I think he's like, stop being a Girl Scout about this. And then he, t- he turns around and unbuttons his pants and yeah, draw, lowers ass. it a little bit. The fuck's a Girl Scout? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody Madoska was talking about. Just forget it. Just, are you going to help me or not? <laughs> I heal his tail. We <laughs> <laughs> just paint a scene here. See, not so goddamn hard, was it? Bubble butt is free. I, I repeat, the bubble butt is free. Uh, there's vines come out of Nicodemus's fingertips that oh. wrap around the tail sprouting into small flowers that straighten it out no <laughs> after it's like healed it. they shrivel and fall off Aww, I love that fun fact only seven years from now until the Girl Scouts are founded this is how it gets wow. started <laughs> you planted an idea. Mad- Madoska has her ways of knowing. Uh, He's very forward I, I think, thinking. I think Beck, you know, pulls pulls up his pants and, and buttons him back up and says, Remind me to tell you about Edith sometime. You remind me a lot of her. And just doesn't elaborate. That's all he says. Huh? Fuck is Edith. <laughs> Story for another time. I just can't believe y'all just put tentacles near Beck's ass in front of a live audience. Oh boy. There'll be consequences That's not for this. <laughs> <laughs> Repercussions are at hand. Fan art. Fan art. <laughs> Never say I don't give you nothing, folks. <laughs> That's the toaster special, baby. Let's go. Throwing them a tailbone. I'm not drawing that. (laughs) (laughs) See, I'm down to 15, I think. Yep. Oh, no. Everyone's getting wrung out. It's fine. I'm removing my wings. Excellent. All right. And then Cassidy wouldn't have a conversation before we head in. Yeah, you were planning on having a chat with Comrade. Yeah, uh, this is a private affair. I was yeah, I think so. I, 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 I can kind of, I kind of catch. I Lynn, uh, Lynn could be in yeah. on this. I was gonna send. I was gonna try to send Lynn as a distraction until well, we're, we're Beck distracted. Got plenty distracted. They were very distracted. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna try to send Lynn and be like, oh no, just just be you. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. How's, how's the ass, old man? <laughs> and I just like kind of like walking and talking while y'all hang back. <laughs> okay, Lynn's distracting, I guess. <laughs> so I think I think I kind of see Cassidy kind of make eye contact and kind of like you know I, I kind of pick up what that he wants to talk in private. So I'll just ask him. Yeah. Hey, hey, what's going on? I don't get you. What's your end game here? 
uh, hopefully to get out of all of this alive. I'm talking about Beck. Yeah. I made a calculated decision, which I think has paid off in our favor so far. Um, if we hadn't teamed up with him back in town, we might all be dead right now. I'm not sure I fully buy that. I feel like y'all have been getting very chummy for someone who just shot you a few hours ago. <sighs> Days ago, weeks ago, hours ago, minutes ago. Time. <laughs> Time is hard here. Yeah, well, I basically set my emotions aside, didn't really worry about that aspect of it, and I just kind of looked for the only path forward I could think of. Look, I understand. He is a ruthless killer. Uh, the second he decides he doesn't need us anymore, you know, that could play out any number of ways for us. I don't think he's particularly attached to us or worried if we come out of this alive or not. I'm aware of that. I'm sensing a butt. <laughs> As he's going to grab Conrad's shoulders, look him in the eye. Are you damn bad for the cannibal? <laughs> I, I, that I just like I feel like the my glasses like cartoonishly like almost like hover in midair <laughs> in front of my face just like completely confused being like huh look I've come to understand him in some ways but uh no look I meant what I told Beck plan A is to help me settle my debt with him that's plan A And then I think at this point, I show Argo uh, the bullet with Beck's name on it. This is plan B. All right, as far as I see it, that's got to be the only plan there is. That man shot you. He shot multiple people back in town. He tore out Bucky's throat. What else has he done before today? What's he going to do tomorrow? I just feel like even though we're disposable to him, he's not particularly, I don't know. I feel like we haven't become his enemy. And that's what we have going for us at the moment. I don't think that's a bar people need to meet. Look, How many times has he shot without even looking? Conrad just like was about to say something and just doesn't say anything in response. Like thinking back, thinking back on the times that I just recently shot quickly. Like <laughs> it's like uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> so I just kind of clear my throat. Um, yeah. Look, I want to get out of this alive. I will do anything to fight for my freedom. And if Beck gets in the way of that. Plan B is looking more likely. I'm going to need you to help with that if it comes to that. I need to know we're on the same page. If he walks out of here, he's just going to keep eating. I'm just going to put the bullet back in my pocket and not really affirm that. Uh, I feel like Conrad's like doesn't feel totally settled on what the outcome is going to be, so... But I'll, I'll just give Cassidy a nod. Listen, when Bucky was here, I talked him down. I stopped a bad situation from getting worse. But he left this with me. Cassidy shows the revolver that he's had since then. This thing? I don't fucking get it. But it's hungry. Um. It's not done. God, do you feel like I need to roll a note? I think it's common sense to put two and two together at this point that the bullet would pair with that gun, or do I need to notice? <laughs> uh, because you have at least one rank in shooting, you would realize, yes, these are compatible. Okay, yeah. Is it even the right type of ammo? <laughs> that would be awful. Is it? 
Yeah, it would. Is it a match? <laughs> is it a Dungeons and, Dra Dungeons and Dragons magic item that just fits the correct gun? <laughs> the magic bullet that fits it, he gun. <laughs> so, I just sort of uh, yeah, hold on to that for now. But, uh, yeah, might need that later on. Conrad doesn't want to take it uh, mm. or even ask to take it at this moment in time, knowing how close he has to be to Beck. He's just worried that Beck might notice or maybe even feel that thing's appetite. So, uh, yeah, Conrad's not going to want to mess with that right now. And despite the reputation, I ain't never killed nobody. I don't want to. Well, if it comes to it, you can leave that to me. That's the same thing. I mean, not about who I know. Pulls the I, I know it's about taking a life. And I'm not happy about it. But what does he do if he walks out of here again? Well, if you're worried about that, that's going to be uh, something you're going to have to come to terms with. Because you're saying you don't want to kill him, but you kind of do. Guess we'll see what it comes to. Yep. I think on that note, unless Cassidy has anything else to say. I don't think so. Yeah. The party moves on. I like Cassidy's conundrum here. No kill, only die. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. Hey, Beck is like, Comrade, come here. I got something to, got something to talk to you about. Yeah, come look yeah. at his ass. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said we're standing outside of a large cathedral, right, Ka? Yeah, I think this. You probably walk in as you're talking, so you're probably just now arriving at it. Yeah. So as as this is all happening, I think uh, Beck calls Conrad up and he goes, "Now, this place changes shape pretty frequently. Don't mean too much, but how tall you think this place is?" Um. Should I roll science for that con? You can tell me here. <laughs> like, yeah, you got yeah. the the calculating, <laughs> got analytic vision, formulas flying through the visual calculus. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, that is a four though, because you have that plus two, so that's a success. Oh hell yeah! You, you calculate this up. as being approximately 112 feet uh, tall in terms of how big the hole is to get in. Uh, it looks like the entrance is about uh, 112 feet. Hmm. Are you familiar with feet? What the fuck kind of question is you that, Conrad? Ears perk up. Okay, I didn't know if you were still using links <laughs> and chains. Uh, no, I never realized. <laughs> How stupid do you think I am? I robbed trains for for nearly 15 years without getting caught, Conrad. You think I can't tell a foot from an inch? Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure you're ahead of the curve a little. A lot of people still haven't caught up. I think he like pinches the bridge in the, the bridge of his snout between his eyes and he goes You're funny, Conrad. That's all I gotta say about that. Alright. <laughs> I think we just need to know what we're getting into. I talked to you back on the train, right? Mm-hmm. I just want you to think about what you're getting into. That's all I'm saying. And I think he just walks ahead. Yeah, and uh, I stay close to him and just walk right in. All right. 112 sounds like a weird number. Sure is. Uh, I think, like, take an opportunity here. Lynn just kind of, like, nudges Chance, like, slightly. You sure you're mm -hmm. uh, good for this? Ah, uh, yeah. Nicodemus, uh, Nicodemus works wonders. It's like there's no injury at all. You just had your arm ripped off. I'm not talking about if it's healed or not. 
it'll take uh, take more than losing an arm to uh, to hold me back. I think this uh, gives Nic you a silent nod. Nicodemus is gonna hold Chance's hand, but no one can see it. <laughs> Call it the stranger. <laughs> Hell, you do. Chance does does take a moment to turn to Nico and say, "I I really do appreciate what you did for me back there." I'll just give it a squeeze. No. Aww. Uh, the invisible hand is very convenient for uh, escaping uh, homophobes. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> oh, boy. The implications. <laughs> All right. In oh. the cathedral. <laughs> uh, unless anyone else had uh, an believe... aside before we head in. It's a very long list, but you can cross ghost hands off of it now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, let's look inside here. There, the problem with being a player in a game as beautifully constructed as this one, where we have like amazing art and just incredible players that can create the greatest drama is that you want to do really cool cinematic shit that would look really sick in a movie, but then like stopping everything to explain what you're going to do and then doing it kind of saps <laughs> the cinematic power from it. So it's like, God damn it. Like explaining the joke. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to head inside here. Aww. Beyond the boundary, heading inside to the Carrion Throne, you step into a fetid layer of bone and sinew. The flesh like protrusions of the maze have formed this massive cathedral hall which leads you to a throne easily a hundred feet tall at its end. And you may have thought the Lord of Hunger was tall as he towered over most of y'all at eight feet, maybe ten. And the Lord of Fear, well, he was a giant practically, around twenty feet tall. But looking before you now, Sitting atop this throne, watching and waiting. You see a hundred feet of tremendous horned creature looking down at you. And that's where we'll take our break for tonight. Oh. oh, this is stupid. It's going to take a big old punch. <laughs> Better punch hard. <laughs> Jesus Christ.